here is the computed structure of fluoromethane with the fluorine atom in light blue, the carbon in gray, and the hydrogen atoms are white. Notice that carbon has sp3 hybridization and that the carbon halogen bond is a short 1.395 angstroms. Here is chloromethane, the chlorine atom in light green. The carbon halogen bond in this molecule is 1.806 angstroms. Here is bromomethane with the bromine atom shown in red. The carbon halogen bond is 1.965 angstroms. Here is iodomethane, also known as methyl iodide. The iodine atom is shown in purple. The carbon halogen bond length is 2.176 angstroms. And we see that as we go down the halogens from fluorine down to iodine, that the carbon halogen bond length steadily increases. Because chlorine is far more electronegative than carbon, when carbon is bound to chlorine, chlorine has a partial negative charge and the carbon has a partial positive charge because the bond is polarized. We have added a pair of dots to represent the Lewis dot bonding pair in the carbon-chlorine single bond. The methyl carbocation has perfect D3H symmetry. In other words, it has the same symmetry as an equilateral triangle, and within the limits of the calculation, each of the bond angles is the perfect 120 degrees that we'd expect for sp2 hybridized carbon. This side view shows the planarity of the methyl carbocation. If we start with a series of halo chlorides, we can compute the energy necessary to separate it into a chloride ion and a resulting carbocation. And we see that methyl carbocations have the highest energy uh, required to form them. They're the hardest to form, so they don't form in solution. Primary carbocations are the next less stable one. Secondary carbocations are more stable, and tertiary carbocations are the most stable of all. We see that the lower the energy required to break the bond is linked with the stability of the resulting carbocation. So tertiary is more stable than secondary, more stable than primary, which is more stable than a methyl carbocation. Here is ethyl carbocation in the gas phase, and we notice that each of the carbons is sp2 hybridized with a nearly trigonal planar configuration. But the two carbon atoms are also joined by a bridging hydrogen that is not in the same plane as the other atoms in the carbocation. This is a somewhat surprising structure, but it is necessary and it has to be true because we realize that by symmetry, each of the two carbon atoms are identical. So there's no difference between the left carbon and the right carbon. So therefore, their physical environment should also be exactly the same in this particular structure.
This edge view of the ethyl carbocation clearly shows the planarity of all the atoms of the carbocation except for the bridging hydrogen. It also clearly shows the C2V symmetry of the carbocation. Let us imagine that the entire plus one charge of the carbocation is localized on the right carbon. Because it is sp2 hybridized, it has an empty pz orbital shown in red. There is a bonding electron pair between the bridging hydrogen and the left carbon, and this is shown with two black dots, just as Lewis dots. This bonding pair can be donated into the empty PZ orbital on the rightmost carbon atom. This interaction is called hyperconjugation, and it accounts for the fact that primary carbocations are more stable than methyl carbocations, since in the methyl carbocation there is not a carbon-hydrogen bond that can donate electrons into the empty PZ orbital on the carbon of the carbocation. This is the one purple carbocation, which is also a primary cation. The structure is quite similar to that of the ethyl carbocation, but now there is a methyl group rather than a hydrogen atom bridging the two carbons. In this carbocation, the carbons at each end of the chain are not symmetry equivalent because one carbon is bound to three hydrogens and the other is bound to two. So we notice that the carbon to the upper left hand is sp2 hybridized. It has a roughly planar configuration and therefore it has an empty pz orbital which is shown in red. On the bridging methyl group, the carbon-hydrogen bond has a bonding pair of electrons shown with two black dots. This pair of electrons can be donated into the empty PZ orbital on the carbon, thereby stabilizing the carbocation.
in two propyl carbocation, the central carbon atom is sp2 hybridized, as we expect, and it maintains a largely planar configuration with respect to the attached hydrogen atom and to the carbons of the attached neighboring methyl groups. The planarity of the 2 propyl carbocation is more clearly seen here in an edge on view. As our final example, we have the tertiary butyl carbocation, which is a tertiary, so therefore very stable, carbocation. The four carbons of the carbocation are all in a plane, as the central carbon is sp2 hybridized, and we see that the bond angles amongst the carbon atoms are within the accuracy of the calculation exactly 120 degrees, and therefore we have a trigonal symmetry around the central carbon atom. This edge view more clearly shows the planar symmetry about the central carbon atom in the tertiary butyl carbocation. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.